Hello everybody, my name is Cyberwolf and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. When we last left off, um, we, uh, we had to do, uh, we had to pick somebody who we were gonna help to, uh, do projects for the festival. Um, and so, um, Natsuki, she's gonna be baking. She's already decided she's gonna be, she wanted to bake by herself. Um, so I think me being there would be nothing but a hindrance to her. Um, let's see. Uh, there's Monica, who is going to be making stuff. I forget what she's really doing. But Sayori is already supposed to be helping her. Um, so that already knocks out the both of them. And then Yuri just found out what she's going to be doing. Um, and so it's probably best if I go and help her, because she's the only one that really needs help or wants it. So... We're going, she's coming over to my house, and we're gonna go make stuff. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert, and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely uh, apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Siori since she left club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Siori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Siori's feelings aside when she might need me? Hmm. I I did um I did have a separate save just in case I made a wrong decision. Um. So. Uh, if if this is like a little romance thing, then I want to go with Sayori because I like Sayori more. Yuri is more of a um. I don't know, she just doesn't seem like the type for me. I decide to visit Siori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Siori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made, a made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Siori isn't anywhere on the first floor. So I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom, where I finally find her. Siori? Hi, Matt! Oh, jeez, I was actually kind of worried. I sit down in her room. Siori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's, that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, uh, I guess you're right. I guess it's been a long time. Not much really has, not much has really changed, has it? Siri's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you come over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to be? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but wait, how did you know that? Siori had already left by the time we decided the last meeting. Monica told me it's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course, but I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then? Yep. Uh, there's more silence between us. Siori stares into a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Siri smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Matt. Eh? Why can't I just sit- eh, Why can't I just be like it's always been? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. 
If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You, you wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants me- it just wants to torture me. <laughs> Suri! I grab Suri by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh, <laughs> Suri gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Matt. But, you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. Just seeing it for the first time. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Siori? <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Matt? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy, without, any worrying, without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even- I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Siori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? She did- did she really want me- want so badly for me to not think about her? Why, Siori? Eh? Why is it that you're- that you've never told me about this? Sorry if I'm having an even rougher time reading today. I'm very tired. I've been very exhausted the last couple days. And... Today is just my day off, and uh, is the day of relaxation, and this is my relaxation right now. Uh, why is it that you've never told me about this? So it's made my, making my reading comprehension a little blah right now. It always feels like I've been betrayed as your... It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend, because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Matt. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. It also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why that's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Siori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it makes for me, whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Matt. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have that could have helped is if everyone could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streak down Siri's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Siori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Aww. Uh, Matt? Siori, I don't care if you feel selfish. 
I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Matt, Sierra isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sierra's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Matt, I... Sierra barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm going, if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to at least uh, let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Siri finally pushes her arms around, around but puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Matt. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Aww, Siri lets me uh lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh, it's what I want. I promise. I, I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sari wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you do that, then I really won't, wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along to help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Yuri shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah, uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. I mean, I understand, but it would actually be a lot. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I have actually dealt with depression a lot in my life. Um, and one thing I've learned is that the feeling you want to do when you're depressed is typically not the thing you should be doing. Um, and in that regard, there's been numerous, uh, like, things that say that whenever you feel like you want to be alone, it's really best to try and go out there to actually be around other people, because that will actually, uh, make the depression go away a little bit. Um, and... Honestly, in this scenario, I think that's really the best case for- the best situation for her is to go and be around other people. I understand she wants to be alone, but that's not the best- it's not the best thing for her. It's what she wants to do, but... Get what I'm saying? It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Now I'm gonna worry about it. I'm gonna worry about it a lot, actually. All right, I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Siori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy, but it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think about, I think Siori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You already, c uh, you always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried, uh, hurried more on my way home. Uh, I suppose that's true. 
I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least, I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yuri to my room. This is actually a nice looking room. Look, pretty comfortable. First thing she does is a glance around in curiosity, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so that's very considerate of you to do. Ah, uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, uh, that would be more embarrassing. <laughs> Wait, don't look in there. I snatch Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she's, keep she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? I wonder what's in the desk. Uh, yes. Um... I have a few things planned that we- Seriously, what's in the desk that it had to be considered in the story? I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help make our guests- I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although, many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to, uh, to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ah, uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's the wood thi wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser of essential, for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, uh, is that so? It's one of my favorite contrib con contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate, permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes a cylinder and pushes the switch on the button. I mean, like, I understand what she's saying, but she's kind of like explaining it in kind of like a weird way. Kind of like the wrong way, actually. <laughs> I mean, what the scents really just do is they kind of like activate things in your brain that make you think certain ways. Like, I have a, uh, like, I'm into aromatherapy, actually. I have a, um, I have a, like, tropical mango scent that I like to, uh, keep in the office. Um, and it actually just went off just a couple seconds ago, or not a couple seconds, but like a minute ago. And that's what you heard the uh, the sound was. Um, and really, what it does, it makes me feel like a whole lot more like joyful and happy and energetic. It it's very very nice, and my nose is so goddamn itchy right now. Ah, <sighs> it's just a moment. A thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole in the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? 
This is a jasmine essential oil. Ooh, it smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that will be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang them from the doorway of the classroom. Then we fasten the paper onto the ribbons and create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some people to peek inside. That's really creative. I have I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. It's that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you'd put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Well, she is an introvert, after all. Like, we've already had that explained, so the less people around her, the, the more she's going to be, like, open, right? Here's a marker, Matt. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ri these ribbons. All right. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an <coughs> intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, well, embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weird about it, yeah, I promise. Alright, the thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't understand what it is. A combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe? Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me, aren't You're la- Blah. You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you you got about sharing. It's- Well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife, with the blade facing me. That's not how you're supposed to hand out hand a knife to somebody. Just FYI. I take it and turn it around in my hands. Like, I was in Boy Scouts. I know how you're supposed to hand a knife to somebody. You're supposed to hand it with the knife in your hand so you control the knife part. And then the other person grabs the handle. And now they have the knife. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Matt! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's it's my fault. I should have warned you. The knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. What did you fucking you know, like sharpen it to the, to like the 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 thinness of a scalpel? Uh, no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a close look. Uh, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah, 
Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. That's really weird. That's really weird. That is really weird, Yuri. Uh, don't do that, please? Um, alright. Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I, Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it was a little weird. It was very weird. That was very weird. And it looked, and it took me by surprise. But I guess, god damn, my nose is so itchy. But I guess she was trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. I think she was doing a little bit more than helping me. I think she was doing a little bit of helping herself. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and look her end index finger in turn. Matt, did you really just do that? N now we're even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. Uh, I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Matt. Yuri giggles shyly. This would be the point where I would call off the day. I'm just done. Just absolutely done. Uh, Yuri's calling- Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The attention is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all uh, out side by side. Out side by side. <laughs> it looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint uh, tablets. Ah, uh, that's right. One of the items Yuri has asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint ta tablets. We'll need a box of six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. Uh, if you fill the cup too much, it'll be too diluted. Alright, taking Yuri's advice, I decide to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-sized glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back to uh, back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I came in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Blah, why did I read it like that? <laughs> I came in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Ah, nothing. Yuri, your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or something? Ah, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors of a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at, uh, at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat! What are you going to write? Well... It'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of each uh, different of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Ah, I'm sorry if it feels too childish. 
No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? You know, one thing I actually really miss from, like, uh, like, elementary school was, like, art class. Like, after, after elementary school and I went to middle school, there was, like, almost no art classes anymore. At least not that I could actually sign up for. Because you actually need to have good grades. And, like, basically you had to have, like, absolutely all the other classes completely done by then. Like, you had to have, like, extra room in your, in your thing, in or in your schedule to really sign up for an art class. And that was really a bummer, because I was kind of like an average student. I wasn't, like, above average. Um... So I actually didn't get to do any of those. And the only little art things we got to do was like little tiny annoying projects that be in some of the like literature classes or something like that. Maybe science. I really like science. So uh, it really wasn't too bad because it's more of like a science project than an art project. We're kind of like one and the same. But like something I really loved from like elementary art class was like working with clay. We got to make these little tiny clay sculptures. We get to make paintings. We get to watch Bob Ross. That was awesome. Um, but yeah, it was just something I really missed, and, uh, it was, like, also pretty much gone in high school, too. But, that was just some of the things I, like, really loved from, like, back in elementary school, was just basically doing art class. We didn't get to do it every day, but it was, like, every other day. And I really loved that. Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you, you feel that way, too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with with other people, even if it's something simple like reading. It doesn't even ma it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unusual paint, unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Gah! Sorry! Yuri reels back. I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It's just... It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then dampen it with hot water. I return to my room to kneel uh, and kneel back down in front of her. Oh boy, that seems very oddly romantic looking. She's holding my arm. That seems uncomfortable. Here, I pat Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Ah, uh, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry, I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait, eh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Uh, I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books, almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle f dizzy feeling. A dizzy feeling? Okay. Uh, wrapped around my wrist, send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. It's not fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again. 
but her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true. But won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here, then have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew! <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. I'm a little glad. I, I'm a little glad to be honest. Was I, go was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Ah, no, it's not that. Wait, I've I totally read that wrong. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least... Okay, I don't know. I think I understood it differently. <laughs> I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we would have extra time after finishing the work. I wasn't. <laughs> well, Yuri thinks to herself. I think it would be, uh, I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait too much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't seem... That doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me, you me, you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want. You can come over, or we can go out somewhere. Uh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Matt. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. That's a little close. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. s siori Eh? Ah, hi, Matt. Siori. Just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Matt. I just stopped by to say hi. Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, I'm already on my way to leave. Ah, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry, but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course. Siori beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Siori waves goodbye after her. Siori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh, well... I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. You see, that's, that goes back to what I was saying. When you're depressed, it's not best to be by yourself. It's best to actually try and get out. And also, is, your depression will try and tell you not to do things. And it's actually best to go and try and be productive. Because when you're productive, it tries to... Cl it Like, when you actually finish something, it kind of clears away the depression a little bit. Um, so I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. And how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. 
tears start to fall down Siri's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Matt? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. Oh, no. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Siri, don't say that. It's true, Matt. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put it up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Siori? What I said before is true. I'm not going to let it this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So, even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But... Siri looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Matt. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Siri? I'm scared that... that I might like you more than you like me. Siri? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Matt, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and, that's enough, Siori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand in Siori's arm and squeeze her hand into my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordless, Siri nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you give to you. Oh! Ooh! Ooh! Okay. She likes me. And I know that. But I am going to save just in case something goes wrong. Because she doesn't seem to like it that I like her. That That's kind of like her whole problem right now. Is that she doesn't like that I like her. But she does extremely like me, apparently. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I love you. Eh? Those are my true feelings. So there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone in the club... Making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you were truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens, as long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Matt. Aww. Sierra Lee suddenly wraps her arms tightly around me. Matt, is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sari in my arms and hold her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you. I, I love you, Matt. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sari's grip around me weaken a little bit. <laughs> what is this? Sari? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now, why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Matt. It's okay, Siori. I might take time for thing. It might take time for things to get better again, but no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Uh, okay. I trust you. Siori and I slowly release each other. So. I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it always has been. That's what I was kind of talking about. She wants everything to go back the way it was before things were getting complicated. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Matt. Siri gazed at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, 
this is the best thing for me, right? Eh? I don't really understand what Siri means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Siri? I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you love me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah, I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Siori. I know that I love her, and she loves me. But I'm having such uh, but I'm having much trouble understanding Siori's feelings as she is, even though I can comfort her. I keep wondering if I would be doing something more or something different. If I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thought I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Suri meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Siori is the most important person to me. And I'll do whatever it takes to make a happy future with her. Aww. Oh, well, this is the end of the episode. So let's go ahead and... Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and save over this one. Yeah. All right. So. There's a lot in this episode. Damn, that got deep. Who boy. I mean, depression. All that kind of stuff. Damn, that got deep. But who boy. Hopefully this next episode will be a little bit more happier. <laughs> um... And I just want to say really quickly, if any of you guys are dealing with, like, depressive thoughts like that, it's alright to try and reach out to me. Uh, I will try my best to try and help. Like I said, I've dealt with depression a lot in my life, and I've tried my damnedest to try and deal with it. I, I think I do pretty well, to be honest. Um, but there are still days where, like, depression can be a really hard hitter. I know today was a really hard hitter, which is, um, which is kind of like, um, like this is probably going to be up a couple of days. This is probably going to go up the day after I record it, but, um, so like today would be the day that I'm actually streaming part six of my South Park series. Um, so, um, today has been really rough for me today like, really downing and all that, so if you, like, go back on my tweets, you'll probably see that, um, but, yeah, I just want to say, if you are having any of those depressive thoughts, it's okay to reach out to me, and I'll try my hardest to help you out, and it's also best to try and reach out to your friends, try and get them to help you out, and there's also lots of little, uh, support things online that you can check out, um, so, with all that said, um, I'm very, very concerned in the game about what Mo about something Siri said about what Monica said, because Monica has been really rubbing me the wrong way lately. Really been making me weird, making me feel weird. It's been really creepy, and now I find out she's saying saying bad things to Siri. I'm not gonna stand for it, Monica. I'm coming for you, Monica, if that's true. If that's true. Ooh, ooh boy. You better not be hurting my Siori. Um, so we will have to see how everything turns out next time. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a like. Please share with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe on your way out. This is Cyberwolf, signing off.